last but not least, our USDA Think Water Fellow, who has a fascinating presentation on the role of water and odor perception. And I'm going to let her tell you her title because it's just a cool word, and I don't want to mispronounce it. So, Madeline, Michelle, let's give her some love. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're almost there. Last one. All right, so thank you, Laura. My name is Madeline, and I'm going to be talking about sniff olfactometry and the system thinking approach to understanding olfaction. And I'm going to go about it right in that very order. I'm going to talk quickly about sniff olfactometry because I'm sure you're all like, what is that? And then I'm going to go into how system thinking has really helped me understand the field that I'm working in. So sniff olfactor what? Right? That's what you're all thinking. It's not a Dr. Seuss character, although admittedly the Lorax is a concept we come across frequently in olfaction. Um, but that's a different topic for a different day. Uh, so this is an engineering drawing of a sniffle factometer, which is a machine that we use to study the psychophysical perception of odors. This is what it actually looks like if you don't know how to read engineering drawings. I don't either. Um, so basically, I have a subject come in here, sit in front of the sniffle factometer, and it squeezes bottles that either have single odorants in them, mixtures of odorants, or maybe actual food products or water. Uh, and we can use that to look at thresholds of different odorants, how odorants behave in mixtures, how they can be compared back to actual products. Really, really cool stuff. Um, I think my actual title of my thesis, um, still working title, is gonna be something along, along the lines of the psychophysical perception of key odorants in a food bottle based in potato chips. It's gonna be very glamorous. Um, but if you simplify that down, my main research question is right here. What's that smell? Um, so pausing real quick, I'd love it if you could all do me a favor and picture a potato chip. Really easy, right? You're all picturing pretty much this, right? All right, now try to picture what that potato chip smells like. A little bit harder to do, right? You can't just like bring that to mind right away. Um, and there's a lot of things that go into why that is, again, a different topic for a different day. But the main thing I want to talk about today uh, and in my research is how that odor image, if you will, that smell idea that you just brought to your mind is probably different from everybody else's in the room. And that's because we all have different thresholds for these different compounds that make up that odor. Um, but from previous research, we know that the main three odorants that affect our odor image of a potato chip for all of us are methionol, which smells like baked potato, 2-ethyl-3,5-dimethylpyrazine, which smells like toast, say that five times fast, and maybe a little surprisingly, methane thiol, which smells like rotten cabbage. So if you mix those three smells together, I can make you think that you're smelling potato chip. It's a pretty cool magic trick. Um, so again, really glamorous, very exciting. I can smell potato chips all day. My research is so cool. Um, but before we get to the very glamorous parts of any research, everyone pretty much starts out here. So this is an actual picture of my desk from earlier this year um, when I was in what I call the lit review black hole, where you read one paper and you read a paper that's cited in that and then one cited in that. And the next thing you know, it's three years later, you're really confused, you don't remember the first paper, you don't remember your middle name, it's a whole thing. Um, and I feel like that can be really emphasized in four main things in this photo. The first three are three cups of coffee. And the fourth is a post-it note that says, LOL what? Don't judge me, you've all been here if you are a grad student or a researcher or just like reading papers. So, I've really found system thinking to be helpful across all aspects of my research, but most prevalently in the lit review portion, because I've been able to take this mess and turn it into this mess. Um, so I know that this looks really crazy and complicated. You can zoom in on one right now, um, just to kind of simplify it. Basically, I just took a bunch of different papers, outlined what they're all talking about, their different results, and then took a look at how all of them relate to each other and how one paper might influence the, the next paper's hypotheses, their results, and, and you know, forward and back of that. Um, so we can simplify this a little more because it is a little complicated looking at it like this. Um, so over here we've got subjects or human subject studies. We've got studies that talk a lot about mixture suppression and cross adaptation, really important for my research. Um, this area, huge exciting part of olfactometry for those of you who are interested. These papers talk very uh, in depth about two main topics of beliefs in the olfactory world. One being that when we're smelling 
odor mixtures, we're smelling them elementally. So we're smelling each of those compounds individually in that mixture. The other side is configural, which says, okay, you're smelling this mixture of all these different odorants and you're smelling a new thing entirely. And so these papers that I have highlighted in this pinkish red color, talk about that, take really strong sides one way or the other, and then some that are just kind of like floating around in the middle. We've got subject studies done on animal subjects here, again, really related to a lot of the human subjects, so that's important. And then over here, we've got these four guys that are cited in every paper ever, and they're, I call them the Smith Mafia. Okay, so from that, I can compress all of that down into this one simple meta map, right? So you got your animal studies, you got your human studies, really important, but the main thing I wanna look at here is this middle part, the configural and the elemental. That's what I was just talking about. All these papers, they're pretending like they're arguing, like this side's right, that side right. I'm sure we can all think of other examples in life where we've had that too. But if you take a step back and you read all those papers and you see the, how those papers, am I on the right side? Um, how all those papers are interacting, we can kind of see that both of those things are actually happening. It's not just one or the other, and you don't have to pick a side. You can just smell your potatoes. You have to not think about it that much. So both of these things are going on. And if you take another step back from there and really look at the big picture and all of these papers together, you can see it's actually this whole idea of temporal processing, which encompasses both the, both the configural and the elemental side. So you really don't have to pick a side at all. Great. And then once we understand what's going on in our noses and, and whether it's configural or elemental or temporal or all three or both or none or whatever, we can move on and think about why this matters. How does this relation or how this research is translational? Which for anybody who's ever written a grant knows that's pretty important. So when you understand odor perception and you can look at it from that step back perspective, you can see how it applies to all these different aspects of research and, and industry and all kinds of things, including nutrition and health. Um, I recently read a paper talking about how they can add an odorant to a food product and make you smell yourself full. Who needs to eat and you can just smell things? This is the future, people. It's really exciting. Um, sensory evaluation of new products, product development, all that cool stuff, and food and water safety and quality, which is arguably, arguably the most important of the three. And then, one more meta map I want to share with you. This is a meta map of how these meta maps have helped me understand my research. So it's like the meta meta. We're on a very meta level here. Very exciting. Um, but basically, by using this systems thinking approach, I've been better able to understand the literature, which then helps me better understand our noses and olfaction, which then better helps me to design my experiments to work on my simple olfactometry, and then add back to the research and to the literature, and it just keeps going around and around. Um, I found that to be especially true when we have new people coming into our lab, new undergrads, new grad students, people who are just interested in our research. Instead of having to, you know, take olfactometry 101, which, you know, it's really cool, but probably not all of you want to do it. If I just share that first kind of crazy map with you, you can avoid reading all of those papers. You're welcome. And then just kind of get all of the main important parts out of it, right? So it's been pretty cool. So I asked you earlier, what's that smell? The smell of science. <laughs> and I just want to thank my lab, uh, Laura and Derek, the USDA, Think Water, and my dog, whose name is Potato. No, not because of my thesis, but she does help me remember that I should probably be working on my thesis. Thanks.